And there is no choir practice this evening. So don't you don't don't have to come back at four today. All right, our final song before Pastor comes, God's Refining Fire. Song number four hundred and fifty-eight. <clears throat> Children's Church, you're dismissed. I knew that. They knew that. <laughs> Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. We were there last week. Let's look at it again in a different spot. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Remember, as um, Solomon, most of the time, he's talking from the standpoint of a human being uh, without the knowledge of God. He, he knows God, he knows, uh, so he does make mention of God many times, and uh, he sees, in his wisdom, he sees things that uh, the world needs to see. He sees things that we need to see. And uh, what he speaks of here is he, uh, he sees the tears of people. People... Uh, the Bible, when the Bible says somebody cried, it doesn't mean like we think they cried, like tears come. It talks about tears or somebody weeping, but the, the word cry in the Bible, you'll see somebody's speaking out. He's crying out uh, to, to make uh, some statement or something. But here it's definitely, he's talking about tears that are uh, tears of sorrow. Uh, let's start in verse number one. We're going to go to verse number three. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed, and they had no comforter. And on the side of their oppressors there was power, but they had no comforter. Wherefore I praise the dead which are already dead more than the living which are yet alive. 
Yea, better is he than both they which hath not yet been, who hath not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. In verse number one, you see, you see the word oppressed and oppressor three times, I believe it is. He says, I returned, considered all the oppressions. And then he said, uh, of such hours were oppressed. And then there were oppressors. So uh, I want you to keep in mind as we look at this, that the oppression, uh, those who are oppressed and the oppressors themselves are not always talking about people. It's not talking about somebody who is uh, a, a person who's causing a problem only. It can be anything. So keep that in mind. It can be many things that can be uh, uh, difficult in somebody's life. Let's go. Hang on to this. We're coming back here. Uh, go over to Psalm 30. Psalm 30, and verse number 5. He's talking about God here when he says, For his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So there's a, there's a I believe, a correlation between what he is saying here in verse uh, 5 and in what Solomon says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, in that the weeping is there. In verse number 5 here, he's talking to people who know God. And he's saying that, yes, you might weep, but that weeping, because you have God, he says that's going to be over soon. You might have a difficulty right now, but don't, don't let that cause problems in your whole life because it's going to go away he says weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning because you're turning to the Lord you're looking to him and you recognize he is going to help you and, and now let's go back to Ecclesiastes 4 and notice again he's talking about oppression oppressors and those who are oppressed and he says and this is important he says they have no comforter he says it twice. And they had no comforter. On the side of the oppressors, there was power, but they had no comforter. And I think most of us understand that uh, comfort is means to help somebody change their mind from a bad way of thinking to a good way of thinking. Even the Old Testament word that is translated as comfort is translated as repentance. So we are to repent. We have, okay, there's a, a difficulty here. My mind is, is thinking one way. My mind is, is, is causing me to hurt my, my, uh, uh, my emotions, my, uh, my spirit. Uh, I'm, I'm down, I might be depressed, I might just have difficulty. Uh, things in my life are, are causing problems. Uh, and I'm allowing it to cause problems, then we come with a comforter to get you. Oh, it can't change the situation. You still have the different difficulties in life, but an, a comforter can help you think about the situation properly. And so he's, he's saying these people uh, have no comforter, and the tears make sense. Tears, heartaches, emotional turmoil... Uh, these things are common in people. Go over to the book of Job. See what Job says. Job chapter 14. In, in Job chapter 14, verse number 1, he says, Man that is born of a woman is a few days. That means he's not going to live a whole long time. We think of think of uh, uh, Noah. Noah didn't didn't build that ark until he was five hundred years old. And he went into the ark when he was six hundred. Uh, way back then, people lived a long time. But Job recognizes man, according to eternity. When you compare it to eternity, man is a few days. 
and even that then he says and full of trouble who in this world doesn't have some sort of trouble we all have trouble maybe some people have more trouble than others but trouble comes and and it's part of life some people would look at uh, the difficulties of some other people and say boy that's not going to happen to me you know it does happen and you can't stop it sometimes uh, you can look ahead you can be diligent and, and look ahead and say I, I, I've got to be very careful in this situation and careful in this situation but boy if God wants you to have a little bit of difficulty you can't stop it but with the Lord we know how to we know who to turn to and he gives us understanding he gives us the comfort that we need so like Solomon we should look at here and see these he says he, he sees the people who are under oppression like I said it's not even a big uh, terrible oppression but he says he beholds their tears those who are oppressed the tears are there because of the difficulty because of the oppression but the tears are going to continue for these people because they don't have a comforter and when you think about not having a comforter not having somebody to help you think right help you to see the situation in a different light or see something that is going to give you a, a, a hope to look forward to without somebody like that um, you're just going to continue to cry and and what I see here when these people are continuing to cry because they don't have a comforter these are people who do not have God they are people who do not know God because God tells us Jesus said when he left and uh, ascended before he went to back to, to heaven what did he tell his disciples he says I am going to send you another comforter so God has already sent two comforters number one is Jesus Christ he came and he ministered to people here and in, in the scripture we see it and we can read about it and as we read about what he, he did and said in scripture it, it should bring us comfort so he was the comforter but he said I'm going to send you another one and that was in the form of the Holy Spirit and when the Holy Spirit comes to us we do have a comforter you and I as Christians if you have if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior you have, you have trusted him and understood what God has done in Jesus Christ that he died and God placed your sins on Christ he died and paid your penalty of sin you have accepted that then you have the ability to turn to the Lord in times of oppression you don't have to continue to cry yes Job said man is born and his, his days are of, of trouble we will have trouble we will have difficulty but we need to remember always to turn to the Lord don't turn inward and try to figure things out by yourself Solomon says the oppression oppressed and oppressors it can the, the oppression can be situations circumstances the oppression can be people but whether those people are friends or relatives people can cause all kinds of problems in our lives just a few words can hurt sticks and stones break my bones but words are worse okay uh, bones can heal sometimes what somebody does to us by their words hurts for so long and we can have that kind of oppression and we as Christians like I said can turn to the Lord have you ever thought about the weather being an oppression I've, 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 I lived in Alaska for uh, maybe three months my parents took me when I was a year and a half old I don't remember it but sometimes people in Alaska uh, because the, the, the way the earth is tilted and everything and the way the sun uh, goes around the earth or the earth turns with, in relationship with the sun there are during um, I have movies that my dad took where the, at midnight 
the sun was in the sky. So if the sun's in the sky at midnight in the summertime, what happens in the wintertime? <laughs> no sun. And so people can be depressed simply because of the, the darkness that they're living in. We can be depressed by the, the, the storms that come, the weather. And Solomon says here in, in verse number one, on the side of their oppressors, there was power. And it's up to you and me to allow or disallow that oppression to take over our emotions. You and I are the ones who either allow ourselves to get down or stand up and say, I'm not going to let this cause me problems. We can have difficulty and we will have difficulty. Think about <laughs> think about the, the, the um, oppression by a government. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about our government, but uh, and, and when you think about it, there is no place else in the world that I would rather live than in the United States of America. The government is, is originally and established as the best government in the world. Uh, yes, the, there are problems, and there are problems because of what? People, people are working in the government, okay? That's the problem, and and uh, um, I'll stop right there. But but I want you to see what what Solomon says, because what is happening today in our government, our judicial system, uh, is probably no different. He had a different government. Solomon had a different government. But go over to uh, chapter three and look at uh, verse number sixteen, and this is what he was seeing in his time. He says, and moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. The place of judgment should be a righteous place. The place of judgment where the, the, the judge decides if somebody's guilty or not guilty, and he should be looking at it fairly and, and with all the evidence and judging ap appropriately. But here he says, in that judgment place, he says there's wickedness selfishness. Maybe the judge or the person who's making the judgment wants something from one person. So he says he's not guilty. You know, it happens all the time. Are we going to let that cause us to have a problem? Are we going to let that oppression of the government, that wickedness that might be in the government, cause us to be down or even afraid? The power is not in the oppressor. The power is in the God whom we have in our heart. And we need to recognize that. Solomon said, when we look at uh, verse number 15 of chapter 3, and I said that what he was seeing at his time is happening today. Look what he said in verse 15. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. God requireth that which is past. He says, all of this, is, what you're seeing is no different today than it was before. So why would it affect us differently than people of the past? Why should we be oppressed and crying? Instead of crying about it, instead of shedding tears about it, we need to look to the Lord. Trust Him to work out the problems. Go over to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, and look what Solomon says in verse number 8. He says, If thou seest the oppression of the poor, and violent perverting of judgment and justice in a province, marvel not at the matter. Okay, okay you see the oppression, you see the problems, you see that these people, even in, in their problems, they, they have tears. He says, don't be marveled at this. This is, this is normal. That which has been is now. He goes on to say, For he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there be higher than they. Higher than whom? The oppressors. He says, There he is, there is a, a he that is higher than the highest regardeth. God sees it. God recognizes what's going on. And God is going to deal 
with the problem. Go over to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter is uh, uh, getting ready to explain uh, different things to the people. But he points out that we are to be like Christ. And look what it says about Christ when Christ was uh, um, arrested and mistreated. 1 Peter chapter 2, look at verse number 23. Who? When he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Who judges righteously? God himself. And so instead of taking the taking on the the, 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 the people who are mistreating him and, and trying to mistreat them back or, or fight against them, it says that he submitted himself to God who judges righteously. And God judged those people. God is going to judge the oppressor. And we as Christians can turn to the Lord. We can seek him and say, Lord, help me in this situation. I don't know what this person or these people are going to do. I don't know how this, this situation is going to turn out. And, and right now it, it, it looks like I'm, I'm going to have to go to jail. I'm, maybe. <laughs> but it might, might be that I'm, I'm going to have to uh, uh, pay my bills and it's bothering me. All kinds of things can can cause problems. Lord, help me to see them right. Help me to see them the way you see them because God looks at it and does he get all worked up? Oh no, oh no, what's going to happen? Oh, oh, how am I going to deal with this? Does he do that? He knows the end from the beginning. And so, Lord, let me see things, things the way you see them. And, and if I can't see them exactly the way you see them, Help me to be comforted. Help me to not look for the worst. Help me not see the worst that can happen. Help me see reality and be have a calm spirit. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So Solomon sees this. He sees this... this uh, this, these tears from these people. He sees the oppression. He sees that they, they don't have a way out. They don't have a way to, to stop thinking improperly. And they continue to be in tears. And so he comes to a, uh, a conclusion that um, is a conclusion that, that, that we should uh, not have usually. But look what he says in the next verse from verse number one. He says, verse number two, wherefore, because of this oppression, because of this, these tears, and they continue to, to tear, to cry, uh, to weep, he says, wherefore, I praise the dead, which are already dead, more than the living, which are yet alive. He says, that, what's, what's happening with the dead? They're not crying, are they? They're not weeping. They don't have any tears. In a sense, he's saying they're better off than the people who are living. You know, it's not they're not really better off because they're dead. But what he's getting at, what he's wanting us, and I think we need to understand this, what he's saying and what he wants us to understand, what God wants us to understand, is that I should be alive. I need to be alive. God has given me life. And so I need to live this life under the control and care of my God. And if I'm in that way, and God is giving me the, the understanding, if I'm allowing him to, I recognize that he gives me peace. And if I don't know Christ, if I don't know God, I may not ever have peace in this life. And the worst thing that can happen is I'll die without Christ. And if I die without Christ, I will never have peace. God wants us to look to him. He even goes so far as this, and, and this is kind of, uh, it's way not, can't be real because it's, it goes to an impossibility. He says, yea, better is he than both they, <laughs> both the living and the dead, uh, is the one who hath not yet been, who hath not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. 
He's saying that it's better not even to be born because if I'm born, then I go through this troubled life and I have these difficulties. So I might live in this difficult situation, but if I die, okay, that's better because it's over. But if I've never been born, well, who's never been born? Can anybody name one person who's never been born? <laughs> Nobody has never been born. Okay, so so people who are aren't who are not people never existed. So it's kind of a, an impossibility. But even Jesus says that about Judas. It were better that he wasn't even born. But we are born, and we have the life that God gave to us, and we need to recognize that God has given us a comforter. Because life without God is a life without a purpose. A life that looks ahead and doesn't see anything that's good. We're going to live and then what, we're, what's going to happen to us? Oh, I might live this life and I might have some fun. I might go on vacations. I might see the world. I might get rich. But what's going to happen to every person? They're going to die. And so what good is life if all I have to look forward to is death. But God gives us the Holy Spirit. God has given us Jesus Christ so that he would pay our penalty to give us the opportunity to have an eternal existence, an eternal life. And that comforter that God has given to us is Jesus Christ, is the Holy Spirit, Christ in us. Go to Lamentation chapter 1. The book of Lamentation, the, uh, the time when the Israelites had been taken into captivity, being judged because they turned away from God. And just in the first few verses of the book, God tells us about Jerusalem or the land of Judah and uh, how they, they hurt. Verse number 1, he says, How doth the city sit solitary? that was full of people. How has she become as a widow? She that was great among the nations and princess among the provinces. How has she become tributary? She weepeth sore in the night and her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she hath none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They are become her enemies. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction and because of great servitude. She dwelleth among the heathen. She findeth no rest. All her persecutors overtook her between the straits. Just those three verses, it, it, it's, it's an awful thing that has happened to Judah and Jerusalem. God had to bring judgment upon them. But here it says she sits solitary. She sits without a helper. She sits in, in, in a lonely place because there's nobody that is there to give her any sort of comfort, any help to change the way she's thinking. You know, it's awful to be alone. If we didn't have friends, you know, some people say, well, I don't have any friends, no big deal. Well, I, we all need somebody. And it, it, when we are lonely, it can hurt, especially for those people who are very social. And if they don't have friends or people turn away from them, they hurt. So, Solomon sees this. Jeremiah sees the city. Solomon saw the people who were crying or tears filled their eyes. Saw the children of Israel and knew that it was because of their sin that they had this problem. And the people without God, without Christ, have the tears because of oppression. But both the children of Israel and those who are oppressed and continue to shed tears are without God. And God says, I give you me. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, God with us, Emmanuel, to die for our sins, to pay the penalty. Tears and oppression fill the earth because there are so many people without Jesus Christ. So many hearts hurt, so many people committing suicide, so many people fighting for the wrong cause. There's no peace in their hearts. There's no rest. As a Christian, 
We need to remember, don't set Jesus Christ down. Don't put him on a shelf. And don't tuck him under a blanket someplace and set him aside and go about our life doing what we want. Because when we go about our life and we have trouble, oh, and then we're hurting, how are we going to be helped? Oh, I know. I can go get Christ. I can get him. I can get the help. And then I can put him on the shelf when I feel better. No. We need not, not to put him down. Keep him always number one. Keep him in focus of our own understanding, knowing that when troubles come, we know exactly where to go, exactly where to turn. The Bible tells us to cast all of our cares upon him, for he careth for you. He cares for us. He wants to help. And, and I can't explain it, okay? Every situation is different. You might have a, a friend that has, has hurt you. You might have a, a relative that's hurt you. Uh, you might have been a, a mistreated in, in some sort of judgment down at the courthouse or something. Yeah, all kinds of things can happen in your life. And when you go through the difficulty, I don't know how to fix it. I can pray for you. We can talk it over. We can look to the scripture and see what God says about certain things. But it's God who is actually going to give you the understanding to calm down, to look at it the way he looks at it, not the way even I would look at it. But God wants us to turn to him. God wants us to recognize that the comforter is the Holy Spirit who is in us. We don't have to live a life full of tears. We don't have to live a life without hope. God gave Jesus... We put our faith in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit comes in. Now Christ, the Spirit of Christ is in us. And we have the ability to live a life with looking forward to eternity. Looking forward to life with God. In this life, now, we have God so that we don't have to have tears. I want to read one verse out of Revelation chapter 21 verse number four it says and god shall now this is this is future this is when we're going into eternity okay god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall be there, there any uh there be any more pain for the former things are passed away god doesn't want us to be Afraid. God doesn't want us to have fear. God does not want us to have uh, uh, tears in our eyes. He doesn't want us to be sorrowful. He wants us to have peace. And so even today, He doesn't want us to be having crying, having tears. He wants us to be trusting Him. Look over at John chapter 16. John chapter 16 This is when Jesus says, I'm, I'm going to send uh, the Comforter. John 16 and verse number 7. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Now, expedient means it's necessary. It's the best thing. It's, it's, if, if, if I don't go away, uh, it's not a good thing expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. See, that when we think about that, why, well, Jesus was there, and he says, if I don't go away, uh, the Comforter won't come. Well, he's already the Comforter, right? He is a Comforter. The problem, or the difficulty would be, for him to be in the United States of America at the same time he's in Arabia. Because he was physically on the earth, okay? So he had to go away so that a different comforter, the Spirit of God, could be working in us in America, South America, Bolivia, Ecuador, uh, South Africa, Arabia, all at the same time. And you think, wow, you know, there are 8 billion people on this earth. And if 8 billion people trusted Christ as, as their Savior, 
uh, there wouldn't be any need for people anymore because everybody saved, but uh, we wouldn't be able to reach out with the gospel. But the Holy Spirit would be in every person. Eight billion places at one time. But it was expedient. It was necessary for Jesus to go for us to have the Holy Spirit. And so many of us Christians don't even use the Holy Spirit when we have difficulty. We take it upon ourselves to try to fix the problem. You know, God wants us to look to Him. That's why He says it, it's uh, uh, people should pray. Men, I, men ought always to pray, He said. Why? Because we talk to God and we are comforted by Him somehow. We have that comforter. Look at uh, Psalm 142. Psalm 142. David writes this, and we know David was a man after God's own heart, but uh, he went through difficult times. But he always knew where to turn, and he turned back to the Lord. Look at verse number uh, 3. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors. You can put oppressors there. For they are stronger than I. I recognize they're stronger than I am. So, Lord, I need you because you're stronger than they are. I knew where to turn. David knew where to turn. Without Christ, as Solomon said, people are better off if they've never been born. But... No, I would rather have been born and have trouble and know the Lord and turn to Him because one day I'll be with Him forever with no problems because of what He did through Jesus Christ. Go over to Psalm 113 and I'll read this and then we'll close. Psalm 113. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. God is there. God is good. God wants us to turn to him. But we can only turn to him if we've accepted his son, Jesus Christ, as our Savior. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the tears that are shed. Lord, we may have tears, but we know that it's only for a night. It's only a short time because you are still there to help us if we know you through the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for your guidance and your help. Pray that you would be with anyone here who does not know you. Pray for your help in their lives, that they would trust Christ as their Savior, to recognize that you gave him uh, to be the Savior be our redeemer lord thank you for being with us thank you for teaching us and helping us to know you i pray in jesus name amen